Hello, everyone, and welcome to Teaching in Room 9. The reason shapes are everywhere we look. But we have a job. Now, go ahead and touch your throat right here and see how they feel. And say to ourselves, to be positive. Lemurs are found on the island of Madagascar. For one, and the numbers get bigger as we go across to the right. Reset, that means taking a deep breath. It may mean counting to 10. Today, we're going to start with a freestyle throat. So I'm going to put my up. All righty, are you ready to learn? Let's go! There we go. Oh, that's all right. Love, we love our classroom. There's it always changing. And you got to make sure that you clean up. Oh, my goodness. What letter is this? C, you're all right. Welcome to Teaching in Room 9, the region's largest classroom. This is Dr. Sanders. And in our new classroom, we can go anywhere and be anything. Wow, we are learning all about our community. But remember, what do I always say? It doesn't matter if you're two or 102. We will have some fun. F-U-N, fun. We will have some fun while learning. I work at Adams Elementary in the St. Louis Public Schools, and let's get this day started. My, I'm gonna get started by, how do I get started? That's right, shout outs, shout outs. My first name today is Jayla. Hi, Jayla. How has your day been? Great. Let's spell Jayla, capital J-A-Y-L-A. You all going to help me? Here we go. J-A-Y-L-A. All right. My next name on my list is Amani. Hi, Amani. How are you doing today? Mm-hmm. Let's spell Amani, capital A-M-O-N-I. Everybody, A-M-O-N-I. My next name is Grace. What are you doing today, Grace? You ready for some fun? Cool, cool, cool. Let's spell Grace, capital G-R-A-C-E. G-R-A-C-E. And my last shout out today goes to Miss Megan. Hi, Megan. Let's spell Megan, capital M-E-G-A-N. M-E-G-A-N. Hi, Megan. It is time for a new adventure. So let's get our learning started. <laughs> it's important to wash your hands at school and at home. You get to follow the same steps. Step one, apply soap and rub your hands together. Step two, rinse thoroughly with water. Step three, dry your hands completely. Step four, throw your paper towel in the trash. Let's review. It's important to wash your hands. Step one, always use soap and wash your hands together. Step two, rinse off your hands with water. Step three, make sure your hands are dried completely. Step four, throw your paper towel away. Fantastic job. Keep up the good work and keep those hands clean. Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9. It's me, Mrs. Forth from the Rockwood School District. I'm so glad that you're back with me today. 
today I have a book that I think you will all enjoy because I think you're going to be able to make connections. The name of the book is How Tall Will I Be? Have you ever asked that question to your grown-ups at home? How tall will I be? My children ask that all the time. This book was written by Shaniqua Wason Rattray. Let's be sure to thank that author for writing this amazing book for us. How tall will I be? It was the day of my doctor's appointment. I was so excited to see the doctor and see how much I'd grown. We arrived at the doctor's office and my mom checked my sister, Karen, and me in. I sat in the toy area and played with the toys. Amir and Karen, it's time to come back, the nurse called. I set the toys down and hurried to my mom. As we walked down the hallway, the nurse said, I can't believe how big you two have gotten. Yes, I'm a big boy now, I exclaimed. I'm four. Yes, you are. Let's see how tall you are. Step right here. The nurse placed me on the marker against the wall. I waited in anticipation as she announced, you're three feet tall. I bet he's feeling so good about growing because he just wants to grow taller, doesn't he? I looked at her in confusion. You're still short, Karen teased. Karen, be nice to your brother, my mother told her. Then she turned to me and said, don't worry, you will be taller than your sister one day. Let's stop and think about what's happening in the story so far. Do we know who the story's about? Do we know what that character wants? Yes, he wants to be taller. He can't wait to grow. And he's at the doctor's office and he thinks he's growing and his sister says, you're still short. I wonder if he's gonna keep growing. Will it be tomorrow, I asked. Not tomorrow, but soon enough, my mother answered. How tall will I be, I asked, concerned. I'm not sure, buddy, but every day your body grows. Really? How? My mom smiled by eating your vegetables and moving a lot. I smirked. Okay. Later that evening at dinner, I made sure to eat all my food, especially my vegetables. Whoa, slow down there, Amir, my dad said. You can't stuff your mouth. I have to eat my vegetables to grow tall, I answered. That's very true, my dad said, but that's not going to happen right away. Do you know how tall I will be? I asked my dad. I'm not sure, but it will happen over time. Very curious, I said. Dad, you're tall. I am, but it took time, he said as he patted my back. Amir just wants to grow right now. Very impatient. I ran upstairs to my room after dinner. I got in bed and I began to think, if I were tall, I could do a lot. So many cool people are tall. I wondered if I could be like them. I began to doze off. In my dreams, I could see all the possibilities. If I were tall, I could do a lot, like be a pilot and fly a plane, or maybe be a basketball player. I could even be tall enough to drive a fire engine, saving the day and putting out fires. Or I could drive a race car, racing for gold to the finish line. Or I could glide in space like an astronaut, counting the stars and planets. Amir's thinking of so many different things he could do if he were just tall. He was taller, yeah. 
What else could he do if he was a little bit taller? That's right. He could do all sorts of grown-up things. Do you think Amir will t grow tall enough? I think so, too. He's just going to have to wait. When I got tall, I could operate a bulldozer and a dump the dirt at a construction site. I could even be a policeman, protecting the city and putting bad guys away. I could even be a veterinarian, taking care of sick animals. There are so many things that I could do. The next morning, the sun was shining, and I jumped up excited to see if I had grown. I ate my veggies and got some rest, just like my parents and doctor said. I stood against the wall to see how much I had grown since yesterday. Mm. I still looked the same as I had yesterday. Let's stop and talk about what's happening in the story. So we know that the character's a mirror, and what does he really, really want? That's right, to get taller. He wants to grow. Is there a problem happening in the story? Yeah, he's not really growing. Because he thinks it should happen really fast, doesn't he? Growing doesn't happen that fast. I wonder if we're going to solve this problem by the end of the story. Do you think Amir's going to grow really tall by the time we get finished with the story? We're going to have to read on to find out. I walked past my parents' room and noticed my dad's sneakers. My dad is really tall. Maybe his cool shoes helped him grow. I put them on, and that didn't do it. I still looked the same. I just want to be tall, I exclaimed. I sat in the hallway feeling defeated. My dad came upstairs. Hey, Amir, he said and sat next to me. I did everything you, Mom, and the doctor told me, and I still haven't grown. My dad turned to me. Wow, so you ate all your dinner? He asked. Yes, I answered. You also got plenty of rest? Yep. But you forgot one important thing, he said. What's that? I asked, peering up at him. Time. Growth takes time, Amir, my dad told me. Like time on a clock? I asked. Not so much time on a clock, more like days. I was once your size, he said. You were a kid? My eyes grew wide. Yes, hard to imagine, I know. My dad smiled. It took time for me to grow. There's a lot that you can do at your size that I wish I could do. Really? Like what? I asked curiously. For one, you ride super fast on your bike without training wheels. I couldn't do that at your age. And you find the greatest hiding spots, he exclaimed. I do like playing hide and seek and riding my bike, I laughed. Yeah, and guess what, my dad asked. What? No one is like you, and that's a special gift. There is only one me. Exactly. So enjoy being a kid and the amazing things that you can do. I do like the fun things I can do, I said standing up. Like what, Dad asked. Uh, like playing tag? I tagged his shoulder and took off running. You're it, I yelled. My dad laughed as he ran after me. Later that day, I remembered what my dad had said to me, that I would grow in due time. I should enjoy being me and all the great things that I can do. I am un uniquely made, and there is only one me. Listeners, did we solve the problem at the end of the story? Did Amir grow taller? No, not yet, but he is feeling okay, so the problem of him feeling icky about not growing did get solved. I hope you enjoyed reading this amazing book with me. I hope to see you next time. Bye, readers. Hello, boys and girls. Did you enjoy that book, How Tall Will I Be? Ooh, cool. What was your favorite part? OK, that was, all right. Now I need, it's time to think. 
we're going to think about the beginning, middle, and end of the book. Can you tell me about the beginning, middle, and end of the book? In the beginning, he was, yes. And then in the middle, what happened? And at the end, yes, my goodness, you all are some smart, very smart students. All right, thank you, and I'll see you in a bit. Hi, Room 9, it's me, Mrs. Williams, the Woodland Creature Teacher. When I'm not here having fun and learning in Room 9 with you guys, I'm teaching and learning at Windsor Elementary where I teach first grade. So hi, and lots of love to all my Windsor C1 family. Now here in our region, we experience lots of different types of weather, sometimes even in the same day. So looking at what I'm wearing, what type of weather do you think I might be experiencing? I heard lots of good answers. It's cold and oh, snowy fur. You know, the weather tends to change quickly here in our area, and I feel a change coming on. Guys, do you see those clouds? Uh, um, I feel like there might be a storm on the way. I've got my raincoat on. I'm ready. Oh. Yeah, it's definitely rainy and stormy here in room nine. But I see the clouds. They're, they're starting to part. It's, uh, it's looking pretty bright and sunny. Oh, well, I guess it's a good thing that I've got my shades now. Oh, but I need some things to protect my skin. What could it be? Do you have an idea? Oh, it's sunscreen. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> Don't want to get a sunburn. But you know what would be really great, since it's so hot and steamy, a little bit of a, a breeze. Oh, oh, that's lovely. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks, my fabulous helpers. So let's think about what we've talked about so far today. We've experienced some cold and snowy weather. What season does that usually happen in? You're right, it's winter. Then we took a cloudy, stormy turn for some rainy weather. Now here in our area, that can happen in the spring, summer, winter, or fall. Then it got a little toasty in here. It was a hot and sunny day next. So we were probably in what two seasons? Maybe even three, sometimes a little bit in the fall, sometimes a little bit in the spring, but mostly in the summer. And last but not least, in came that cool breeze. Now we can experience windy days in pretty much any season here in our region, winter, spring, summer, or fall. So I hope you had a fun time exploring seasons with us today. And I'm sending you lots of love and a great big smile. See you soon. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome back to our amazing classroom. It still looks good. You know what time it is? I got those shoes on. And it's time to do a little moving. Are you ready, everyone? Please stand up. Jump up and down 10 times. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. All right, we're going to do some big arm circles forward. So you're going to go big, big waves. OK, you ready? We're going to do it for seven. Let's go forward. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. All right, we're gonna um, we're gonna raise our shoulders for. Oh, oh, yeah, let's do it backwards too. Here we go for six. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's raise our raise our shoulders for seven. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, let's roll it out a little bit, right? That's right. And one more. Raise, you like raise the roof? Let's raise the roof for six. Let's go. One, two, 
three, four, five, six. All right. Ooh, you all are breathing so hard. That's good for you. It's good for your heart and your mind. Let's sit down on three. One, two, three. Up, down, up, down. Sit right down on the ground or on the floor in your seat or on your table. No, don't sit on the table. All right. Uh, ooh. Are you ready for some more? All right, I'll see you in a bit. One, two, Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia, I'm a first grade teacher at the Soulard School, and here for Teaching in Room 9, this is our song time. Songs are a fun way for us to practice counting and numbers. Our first song, we're going to be counting from 1 to 10. Counting up from 1's is fun, 1 then 2 is doubled, 1, 3 then 4, let's add some more. Five and six, we're full of tricks. Seven, eight, then nine and ten. Let's start all over again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that's the end. Great job, friends. We practiced counting from one all the way up to ten, and you did a lovely job. Thank you so much. Kiss your brains. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Now we have some fun facts about our scorpion. Yeah, scorpions are amazing creatures. Um, a fun fact about scorpions is the larger the pinchers, typically the weaker the venom. And that's because they use their pinchers to capture their prey and, and crush them and eat them. They also have eight legs, two pinchers and one stinger. And on the end of each of these legs, they have little hooks like for, for climbing and repelling. As a matter of fact, they can usually hang upside down with those little hooks. Oh. Yeah. They are insectivores, meaning they search out and hunt down insects. They specifically love cockroaches. And that's because they live in the floor of rainforest underneath the leaf litter. And there's a lot of species of cockroaches in that particular environment. They do have two sets of eyes. They've got a primary set of eyes and a secondary set of eyes. However, they don't use vision very much to see as much as to hunt by movement. So they see their prey moving, so they snap at it. And like all scorpions, they will glow underneath a black light. Ooh, glow in the dark scorpion. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for those fun facts. Yeah. Hey, Bay, this is Candace with Chaos, and I want to introduce you to my friend, Nevea. Here's Nevea right here. Nevaeh is an absolutely awesome little girl. She loves to sing and she loves to draw and she loves to color. But Nevaeh has been through a lot of stuff. Nevaeh has lost a lot of people that she loves in her life and Nevaeh has been called bad names and Nevaeh is a fighter. Sometimes Nevaeh fights people because she thinks they're gonna hit her so she hits them first. And Nevaeh is often told that she's disrespectful, but she's really not disrespectful at all. She just wants to be safe because she often doesn't feel physically and or emotionally safe. And so Nevaeh is learning how to reset. Can you say reset? Reset stands for remember every situation encourages thought. And so whenever Nevaeh thinks about doing something, she resets before she responds so that Nevaeh can think, can this be something that can get me in trouble? And if it can get me in trouble, she doesn't do it. And so if there are times that you need to reset before you respond, I want you to think, what are some other things that I can do? Do I need to take a deep breath? Do I need to go talk to a trusted adult? Do I need to walk away? What are some things that I need to do? So the next time you think about doing something and it can possibly get you in trouble, I want you to reset before you respond. So remember every situation encourages thought. And so try it. Talk to a trusted adult, let them know how it works, and then let's see what happens. I'll see you later. Have a great day. Bye. Welcome back from your learning adventure. I had an adventure earlier today with my letter C, didn't I? I had an adventure with it, but we, I got it right. I got it exactly right. But now it is time for us to get out of 
teaching in room nine. But before we do, we have to spell our favorite word. And what word is that? Nine. Let's spell nine. N-I-N-E. Nine. Thank you for being in teaching in room nine. Bye-bye. Teaching in Room 9 is supported in part by Know who to reach out to when you need help. There is hope. Call or text 988.